This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics, and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last 10 years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash hue for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code hue at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and straight up, I know exactly what it is that I'm seeing, and Hasselblad's just announced XCD75P. And that is a decontented, 18% wider field of view, 29% smaller, 28% lighter, just 398 grams, quiet leaf shutter equipped, more optically advanced, and a whopping 48% less expensive version of my favorite lens in the latest XCD lineup, the 90V. I encourage you to watch my earlier videos on the Hasselblad X system, beginning with the 90V done 11 months ago, but then I suggest you also check out my videos on the 25V, the 38V, 55V, the X2D, the X1D2, and original X1D for a more complete understanding of the basis for my comparison in this video. But forget about what you might infer from my use of the word decontented long enough to see what it allowed me to capture out on the streets of New York with images like this. one hand. Holy f Who cares about semantics? The image quality in the real world is fabulous, although hold that thought. Still, what precisely do I mean when I say decontented? Well, call the 75P a careful edit of the 90V. 1. The 75P's leaf shutter tops out at 1 2,000th of a second, one stops lower than the 90V's 1 4,000th of a second. 2. The 75P's maximum aperture is one stop slower at f3.4 than the 90V's f2.5. 3. It does away with the manual focus clutch of the 90V, beautiful thing, along with those lovely hard stops and engraved depth of field scale. 4. It deletes the multifunction control ring of the 90V, which I, as a creature of habit, would never use for anything other than aperture, but hey, that's just me, your mileage may vary, and that's fine. 5. It deletes the aperture declick switch of the 90V, and 6. It deletes the iconic Hasselblad V plate of the 90. Also a lovely touch. What it doesn't compromise on is build quality, image quality, industrial design, or feel in hand. More importantly, 1. The one-stop difference in highest shutter speed won't matter to most if not all of us because a. Hasselblad's X system is not designed for sports and B, with the X2D's minimum ISO of 64. Even in bright midday sun, with the 75P wide open at f3.4, one is unlikely to need more than, say, a thousandth, maybe fifteen hundredth of a second, and the 75P can close all the way down to f32, diffraction notwithstanding. I wouldn't anticipate a need to futz with a screw and ND filter. They can be handy. 2. The one-stop difference in maximum aperture has less impact on the shallowest depth of field for portrait work than one might imagine. Wide open at 
call it a headshot distance of 2.25 feet. The 75P's maximum aperture of f3.4 yields just three quarters of an inch of depth of field. Not enough to have both the eyes and tip of nose in focus. At least not with my nose, if that's what you want. The thing is, the 90V's maximum aperture of f2.5, equalizing for image size just a few inches back at 2.7 feet from the subject, is only one-third shallower, that is, a quarter of an inch shallower, at just a half inch of depth of field. In other words, plenty shallow in either case. On the other hand, that one-stop difference can become significant to image noise in low-light situations, say the difference between ISO 8000 and 16000, and, frustratingly, when it comes to autofocus. I've found more than once that in low light or low contrast, the 75P's 3.4 maximum aperture occasionally resulted in an autofocus fail. That is, it wouldn't lock onto the subject, it would simply blink red, and therefore wouldn't allow me to trip the shutter at all. Where under identical circumstances, the 90V's f2.5, wide open at 2.5, was able to confirm proper focus and get the shot, but I wasn't always able to get the shot with the 90V either. With this said, I should mention that neither my Leica SL3 with Aposumicron SL90 f2, nor my Sony a7R5 with 50mm at 1.4G Master, both in IAF mode, could consistently lock onto my eye in low light near minimum focusing distance either. Once I schlepped a 100 watt bicolor LED into the bathroom upstairs, all three cameras' autofocus systems did lock onto the eye. In this particularly bizarre setup, I think I think I'll spare you the bloodshot images that resulted. It was, surprisingly, the Sony, which was most reluctant to settle onto my eye consistently, but with more than half again as many pixels at its disposal and a crazy high magnification pixel peeping, manually focusing the 75P did give the best results of all. Manual focusing should be part of anyone's repertoire, but in the case of the X2D, or any other camera really, A, this is best accomplished by using magnification rather than focus peaking with the excellent EVF, and B, it is best, it is only fair to acknowledge that shutter lag on the X2D is sufficiently pronounced, that zone focusing for street work will be less useful than one might hope, never mind the fact that again the 75B has no depth of field scale engraved on the barrel, and the X2D itself doesn't offer an electronic depth of field scale visible through the EVF or the rear panel. Distance only. 4. Hasselblad made, and I applaud this, the very bold move upon launch of its X system six years ago to issue all external controls. Truly part of the modern design idiom as seen in Nikon's Nikkor Z 1.8 S primes, Panasonic's Lumix S 1.8 primes, and like his reference standard F2 Aposumicron primes, by the way. And in practice, both Claudia and I find it easier and faster to use front and rear scroll wheels, generally, to dial in the exposure triangle rather than using the left hand to adjust aperture on the lens itself. It is also less expensive to produce lenses without external controls, and frankly, this makes a lot of sense to me. 5. Since the X2D is a stills camera only, there is no particular need to declick the aperture, although the presence of that control on the 90V, as with the more recent 25V, may be a harbinger of a hybrid HASI somewhere down the line. Next, what do I mean when I say more optically advanced? I mean precisely what the MTF charts show. The optical design shows, one, the 75P's aberration corrections at frame's edge per the MTF charts are as good as, or better than, those of the 90V. I do wish, however, that Hasselblad would reinstate its policy of publishing MTF charts for minimum focus distance and infinity. And while we're at it, 
I'd prefer that they, along with the rest of the industry, publish MTF charts not only at maximum aperture, but at the same, call it sweet spot aperture, typically down around f5.6 or f8. I'd like to see the same equalized for depth of field across different formats. I also wish the industry would standardize on 10, 20, and 40 line pairs per millimeter, maybe 50 line pairs per millimeter in this age of high resolution sensors. This more complete set of metrics would make it far easier to compare lenses within any particular company's lens catalog than is possible today. Two, the 75p's resolution fall off at frame's edge is more dramatic than that of the 90v, not only because it happens farther out from the center, but because it is steeper from that point on. This is clearly a conscious decision which will actually work well for shallow depth of field portrait work, less so for edge to edge urban landscape, although the 75V at the edge has less stigmatism. Three, the 75P uses 10 elements in 10 groups rather than nine elements in six groups of the 90V which is generally neither here nor there for me personally, because I'm really only concerned about the results. Four, like the 90V, the 75P uses one extra low dispersion element and one aspherical lens element. The 75P, however, has an additional extra low dispersion aspherical lens element, two in one. Again, neither here nor there for me per se, but it does show you the intention and ambition of the designers when it came to the 75P. The net of all of this, for half the price of the 90V, Hasselblad has given us a usefully smaller, lighter, and marginally more versatile lens with image quality that 99% of us, 99% of the time will find indistinguishable from the 90V. But there will also be instances when the 1% of us will see those differences sometimes the 75P outperforming the 90V. The 75P also closes in on being $500 less expensive and half the weight of the earlier XCD 65mm f2.8. The 75P with nicer ergos, industrial design, and a quieter shutter. If a longish normal slash short telephoto is your go-to field of view, if portraiture in the studio or out on the street is your thing, or measured. Normal field of view photography is your thing. The 75P is arguably the most compelling option within the XCD catalog today. In the end, I think it's fair to say that it is second to the 90V principally for the longer lens's slightly more flattering look, and because the 90V's one-stop faster maximum aperture can be an advantage for autofocus performance and noise levels in low light or low contrast light. Although noise reduction has become really, really good these days. But what does all of this mean for you? You know it depends upon your use cases, your priorities, your budget. I'll put it this way. If you are already a Hasselblad X2D shooter, or you've figured out that you're ready to sell one of your kidneys for an X2D because you want A, the best color science in the business, B, the best menu system in the business, C, arguably the best in-body image stabilization in the business, D, arguably the best grip in the business, E, build quality, second to none, F, Basic ergonomics, second to none. And don't mind the G, the X2D 100C operates at a leisurely pace. H, the autofocus performance is most comfortable at a deliberate pace in decent lighting, even more so in a well-lit studio with inanimate objects or models who look and often move like inanimate objects and still doesn't offer IAF or continuous AF or tracking AF. 
I, Hasselblad, still hasn't implemented auto ISO when the camera is in manual mode. J has a lot of things. The proximity sensor for auto switching between the EVF and rear screen still hasn't been properly fully sorted. K, the X2D still doesn't have continuous real-time depth of field preview. And now you want the one longish normal or shortish portrait lens you might be able to afford because you can't sell your other kidney. I'm here to tell you the $2,300 75P is it. Unless you insist on a wider field of view, a marginally wider field of view. And then I'll tell you that the $1,100 45P is the value pick in the entire XCD lens catalog. If those other trade-offs make sense for you. The bigger picture is this. If Hasselblad continues along the path set by this 75P with its next few lenses, and finally, conclusively, upgrades the X2D's 100C autofocus and operational speed to match, that is, make the body appropriate to the quality of the lens, the company may finally achieve the kind of breakthrough commercial success and longevity that those of us who love the brand have wanted it ever since launch. At that point, the XCD would be the camera system not only with build quality and menu system second to none, I'm wrapping it up here, guys, industrial design arguably second to none, a pedigree absolutely second only to Leica, but a system which, for the right kind of photographer, courtesy of a robust, lightweight, and relatively accessibly priced lens catalog, consistently able to leverage those megapixels along with 16-bit color somehow amplified with this brew, this magical brew that they call Hasselblad Natural Color Solution. Well, that might be the camera system to put Fujifilm's GFX system on its back foot. It might well be the system that puts Leica's full-frame SL system on its back foot too. The combination of everything I've just mentioned, plus two-thirds more megapixels capable of meeting or exceeding the image quality of Leica's best glass on their 61 megapixel SL3 flagship, a superior value at the top of the photographer-only camera food chain, or suddenly is in an admittedly bigger package, more expensive package, a 102 megapixel medium format, seven or eight stop IBIS equipped, substantially larger EVF equipped, interchangeable lens version of Leica's brilliant Q3 series. Yeah. But that is a bunch of ifs. And the market doesn't stand still. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics, and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last 10 years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comment section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video called Via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost to you affiliate links down below, sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially joining us on Patreon links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.